I'm vlogging. <laughs> so much hairier than I thought it was gonna be. I've just found thrips. Ross and Claire, describe your ideal plant qualities. <laughs> describe your ideal partner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <plant>. Tall. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. I thought I would start a little vlog for the weekend because I've got a very planty weekend coming up and I was planning on taking you, oh my God, that was also my knees clicking, I'm so sorry. But I was planning on taking you with me anyway to another plant swap on Sunday. But I thought I would do things a little bit differently this time. I thought I would take you through the process of how, how I decide which plants I'm gonna take because I have got quite a few things I'm hoping to get rid of and swap for better things and yeah just kind of bring you with me for the whole weekend you might be able to see as well there's a big old pumpkin behind me me and ross were thinking we might do some kind of seasonal cozy things this weekend like pumpkin carving and stuff like that so yeah it's just gonna be a little bit of everything but first if you're new here hi my name's claire and this is yoli I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, so this is a slightly spontaneous start to the video. It's currently Friday and usually this is the day where I decide what I'm taking and then tomorrow I'll show you and then it will all be a little bit more structured. But today I thought we could decide together. Uh, also, you're just going to have to bear with me today. We've just done lots of washing, so the flat is covered in sheets and towels. And also, Ross has just made a very delicious smelling stew, but it, we're just, we're living in chaos here at the moment. But yeah, that's um, the plan. The plan? There is no plan, really. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So currently, that was a very loud car, um, bar one plant, I don't know what I'm going to take to the plant swap and usually I feel like by this point I'm a little more prepared. I have got several propagation boxes which if I spin the camera around into the planty chaos down here you might be able to see. Uh, I've got several prop boxes that I haven't opened in like months some of them so i think my first port of call is probably going to be to get into those have a look at what i've got see what i want to keep for myself and then kind of get an idea of how many things because we are getting the train and it is obviously going to be carting lots of things on the train um how many things we can carry and then i will think about if i want to chop anything else in my own collection it's difficult actually because i'm feeling really happy with my collection at the moment and although I absolutely could take some cuttings I'm kind of like I don't really want to disrupt anything so yeah we'll see I'm gonna get into those boxes first and see what we're working with Okay, I look to have some very full prop boxes here. So I'm just gonna take a look and kind of get an overview of everything, see where I'm at, because some of these things, I don't even remember what they are. I've got these three little ones at the top. Oh, and in fact, I might make some interesting discoveries because often I will just throw like random cuttings I get or wet sticks or corms and stuff like that into prop box and completely forget about them so well there's nothing in that one I don't know what I thought I was trying to grow in there but it either hasn't worked or it's very slow to get going oh this is quite interesting okay this might just be a little bit of like updates as well um if you watched my video probably about four or five months ago now when I chopped some Peperomia prostrata string of turtles leaves in half to see how they'd propagate. I put them into a prop box and obviously completely forgot about them. 
and look, you can see they're actually growing really, really well. Uh, and to be honest, this is something I might take to the plant spot because I, as much as I like the string of turtles, it's not a plant that I am, I, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it that much at the moment. And I have still got my mother plant, but in fact, that's one that I might swap. So I may, I may put these to one side and I might take them if anyone wants them. If not, they can go on the free table because I actually don't think I do want them. few things in there that I think would probably do quite well. I'm just going to go through everything for now and then when I start making decisions I will talk you through, I will talk you through more things. been in the prop box for such a long time that it's actually rooted into another pot and now it's just hanging. <laughs> As well as plant swappy stuff, I'm discovering lots of exciting things that I completely forgotten about, like the Skindapsa Silver Hero. I know I've been saying for ages that I'd like to fill out my mother plant a little bit more, so I'm gonna hang on to this and hopefully, oh, if I've got time this weekend, maybe even I will do it then. I was gonna say combine the two. But yeah, there's lots of things in here that I'm excited about actually. Okay, so I have got some very good options here. I've got lots and lots of things that actually I think would make really good swaps. Some things, as I say, I had completely forgotten about and it's quite nice when you can kind of rediscover your plants. They feel like little hidden gems. So I'm gonna take you through everything I'm considering taking at the moment uh, and then we can refine it a little bit. I thought I would bring you down here and show you the plants that I have discovered. So you can see Yoli sleeping like a little angel in her bed. Her bed, which does ironically <laughs> live on the sofa now, but she's such a sweet girl. You're such a sweet girl. But one of my friends that can't make it to the plant swap has asked me to unofficially swap a few things on her behalf. So I've got lots of alocasia corms in those boxes there. I've got a croton and various types of little alocasia in that box there as well. So I need to account for the fact that we're gonna to have to take those on the train and also remember to take them. I think I'm gonna pack them into my box tomorrow as well. But the things that I found in my prop box, so I've got quite a few Philodendron Genevianum, Genevianum cuttings, which have all rooted and are really, really beautiful. I um, I chopped this plant up a while ago to try and fill out the mother plant. And then I also put the mother plant into the prop box and that one seems to have just really filled out itself. So I'm like, do I need all these cuttings? I don't think I do. And also I don't think it's one that many people have got. It's not one that you see about every day, so I thought that would be quite an interesting one to take. Uh, Monstera Escaletto. I have got one left in my prop box that I am going to keep back in the event that I decide to try again with that plant, but I don't see that happening. I'm just really bad with that plant. 
and I don't think I care enough to be, I don't know, putting more energy into it. I don't know. Like right now, it's not the plant for me. Um, but then I found this massive Monstera dubia cutting, which hasn't grown any other leaves. However, I'm sure must be rooted by now because it has been in the box. In fact, yeah, it is rooted. I can see some roots in there. Uh, it has been in that prop box for, <laughs> I want to say like six months, um, but it is absolutely ginormous. I was going to hang on to it and pot it back up with my big mother plant over there by the window. But to be honest, that one, you can't actually see it at the moment, but it's got leaves growing up on top of that shelf now as well. So if I did want to take some more cuttings and chop and prop, then I can absolutely do that. And then I've got a little rooted section of the Schismatoglottis SP Silver Borneo, which I wasn't sure if it was gonna root, to be honest. I took a chunk off the mother plant and I was like, is this gonna work? And it has worked, which is good. And I think this is one that will make someone really happy. I think it is such a lovely plant. Oh, and then this one, Emma actually gave me this one and I've known for a while that I'm gonna swap it. It's just not the plant for me. It is, it's a, oh, what is it? Hoya Rechusa or Returnusa or something. Uh, again, I know it's one that lots of people really like and to me, it just looks like a mealybug infestation waiting to happen. Like, I cannot even imagine <laughs> what would happen if you've got mealybugs on a plant like that. I've got some little alocasia portadoras as well, which are definitely going to go. This is one that I definitely don't need more of. And then I've got several Monstera Albo cuttings. Again, as you can see, incredibly rooted, growing out of the cup. Uh, and then I've got a couple of little Anthurium clarinerviums. These are my clarinervium babies that are still very much babies. I really thought that maybe they would have sized up a little bit more by now. I have given quite a few away. I, in fact, took, I think, five or six of them to the last plant swap. Um, they might have sized up by like a centimetre since then, but it's not particularly significant. Things like the Philodendron tortum, several root sections of that. It's actually got some nice new growth coming in as well. Finally from the, uh, two more, finally from the prop boxes. Some of these are duplicates as well. By the way, I have got multiples of certain plants, but I'm not gonna bother showing you them. Um, I've got some, ooh, covered in dog hair, uh, some Philodendron Kerala hybrids, which to me just look very similar to the Philodendron Bell Marks. I quite like the way it grows. It grows slightly, um, it's space, the, the words, the spacing on the main stem, the internodal spacing, that's the word I'm looking for, tends to be a little bit more stretched than the Philodendron Bell Marks. And again, I've kept a cutting back for myself should I choose to grow this plant again, but I've got this section here that is beautifully rooted in this jar and I'm like, it's good to go. I may as well find it a nice home. Uh, and then finally, finally, from the prop boxes is this section of Philodendron Atabapoense hybrid. And again, I've got quite a few of these. It's one that I did enjoy growing for quite a while. And the, I don't know, the novelty of it just wore off and I, yeah, chopped the whole thing up, put it into prop boxes and thought that maybe I would fall back in love with it. And it just hasn't happened. So again, I feel like it's one that will excite someone else more than it's currently exciting me. <sighs> and then I've got other things like, for example, sections from my Pink Princess Philodendron. I've got rooting and in fact, sprouting in this box here. I know some stuff in here is rotten, but you can see there is some little pink princess sections. And although I could take them, that is a plant that you do see quite a lot at plant swaps. The plant swaps that I've been to anyway, you see that quite a lot. And I'm like, will it just end up on the free table? And then will it be in danger of not finding a good home? I would prefer to take things that I know are gonna be really appreciated. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't bring like pothos cuttings or like much um, more common plant cuttings and have them appreciated because I've got some, like for example, my mandula pothos that I bang on about all the time. I've got some in my collection that I've got deemed more common at plant swaps and I adore. So yeah, at the moment, that's where I'm at with that. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a tidy up, a little bit of an organize of everything.
And yeah, I might think of more things. I still haven't worked out if I'm gonna chop anything yet. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, and also some more things that I'm definitely gonna take that I forgot to show you. The first one is the Hoya Ake Splash. This is one of the ones that I got as an import plant and although it's pretty healthy and it's quite an unusual Hoya, it's just not one that particularly excites me and I do think that's one that I know I'm saying would make someone else happy, but I really think it would. Um, likewise, with the variegated Raftophora tetrasperma, I know this one's looking a little bit raggedy, and to be honest, that's why I chopped it up in the first place. I just, I couldn't keep this plant happy, and I didn't care enough to keep this plant happy. So I've got several rooted sections of this. Most of them are actually putting out new growth now as well. You can see I've got a little leaf there that's about to unfold. So yeah, it's already looking like I might have quite a full box. I might see if Ross has got any plants that he wants to chop and swap as well because he's got some nice things. Another thing that I found in my prop box were these sections of my Hoya Crimson Queen that I chopped up ages ago and I'm not going to plant swap these bits. I have missed this plant so much and I just want it back in my own collection. So they are insanely rooted and definitely ready to be potted up. I feel like maybe it might be like a fun planty activity to do this evening to maybe pot these ones up. Oh, I've just noticed something quite exciting. Slightly off topic, but I know I just mentioned that my Anthurium clarinervium seedlings were taking a really long time to size up. Look at this one! This is one that I could plant swap, but I, I kept this one back for myself just because I'd like to have a clarinervium in my collection that I created, like I pollinated and harvested and germinated and yeah, so I think I'm going to keep this one for myself, but I had chopped it right back. And this is the first leaf it's given me since then. And it's gonna be a big one. It is still sizing up. So that's very exciting. Here with the water in the bottom of my prop boxes has gone so green and gross. I really need to clear both of them out, but for now, I'm just gonna do one. And one that I feel like I've been kind of on the edge with for quite a while is my Anthurium doriaki. And this is one that I've almost got rid of several times. And each time I've been like, no, I really like the way it's growing now. Or like, I'll chop it back and I'll try again. And I've kind of re-fallen in love with this plant, but for the same reason each time it keeps bringing me back to this point, which is just that when it starts to size up, although it's beautiful, that's just out of neglect, but a lot of its leaves will just kind of like, I don't know, they'll snap and they'll break. And it hasn't done it as much here, but I can tell that just in some areas, it's starting to become very brittle. And the plant just, oh, you know what? In fact, it looks so lovely on camera that I almost now want to keep it. Um, but it never looks as healthy. Oh, you know what? That's why probably it's not looking so healthy. I've just found thrips. Can you see that? Ah, okay. 
So that means it's a definite no-go for the plant swap. However, the good thing is I have got some stuff mixed up. I've got some neem oil spray with some clove and I think it's lemongrass oil one of you guys suggested using for thrips and it does seem to be working really well. Um, I think it is actually just that leaf. I can't see any others. Um, but I'm going to get this one straight through to the bathroom, give it a shower down, use some horticultural soap, and then I'm going to spray it. I'm going to leave it in there overnight. And as I say, it won't be a plant spot plant. I've actually got some plants already in the bathroom. As you might be able to see, and in the bath, that are probably ready to go back into... Also, my tripod is so squeaky. Um, but are probably ready to go back into general population now. They're, these have just been precautionary treatments because they've been close to other plants that have had pests, but my Anthurium villanellorum, I chopped this one right back recently, and this is the first leaf it's given me since it started regrowing. And although I haven't seen any pests, the fact that the leaf has come out a little bit warped looking is sometimes a bit of a sign that there might be something lurking, so I treated it anyway, uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, and then a section of my variegated alocasia fry deck. Again, same thing. I can just see some damage on the leaves. And this one is through in the bedroom at the moment next to a plant that had thrips quite recently. So it has been a precautionary treatment. Uh, it is giving me a new leaf though, which is very exciting. And then just my normal alocasia michelitziana is growing so beautifully. No sign of anything cause for concernish, but it was next to a plant that I found spider mites on. And this one is a magnet for spider mites. So I was like, whilst I've got the energy to do it, just treat it and hopefully I won't have any issues. But yeah, in fact, I'm gonna take these ones back through next door and then I'm gonna treat the Doriaki. chopped it back my begonia lucuana is finally putting out some new growth look at that dirty little growth coming through there i'm so excited about this one i think already it's so pretty right back to the pesty plant hit off a little new leaf it had that was unfurling. Damn it. Oops. And then this is the water mixed with clove oil, neem oil and the lemongrass lemon balm, can't remember what it is, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but yeah, it's just an aerosol sprayer. This is amazing, I use it for literally everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna spray all of the plant, fronts, backs of the leaves, and then leave it to dry off in here. And then do my best to keep this plant as far away from other plants as I can. write out some of my labels now. You don't have to do this before the plant swap, they do give you little cards to do it on, but I often just find that when I get there and there's lots of people and there's lots of like plants to look at, I find it, sometimes I find it a bit overstimulating and the thought of then having to try and create a bit of quiet space in my head to write out labels as well just doesn't happen. So, <laughs> seeing as I've started this early, I thought I would just do it. I've made a very, very rough note, which no one else can read apart from me. 
a very rough note of everything I've put over there. Uh, and then, yeah, I got loads of these recently just on Amazon, just little like plastic plant stickers and like a decent pen, just because, uh, I said it recently actually, I, if I don't talk about plant, like my specific plants a lot, I often, well not often, but like I have just noticed recently, I've started forgetting some of their names, like there was an alocasia in it, I think it was an alocasia ninja, I can't actually see it at the moment, um, yeah, it was an allocation injury and I was like, I know the name of this plant, but I can't think of it and it's annoying me. And I've got certain hybrids and certain like Hoyas and things that I just wanted to remind myself of. So yeah, got lots of these. <laughs> dinner because she's on a diet. Fat dog. I've been told she needs to lose a few pounds so she's having peas and chicken with her biscuits. Sit down Yelly. Sit down. Good girl. Go on then. Go on then. Orange. Fun and banter. Only kidding. literally just woken up and the sun hasn't even come up yet it's um i think it's about seven o'clock at the moment but this morning me and ross have booked to take yoli to a place that we take her to a couple of times a week where it's basically an enclosed space so she can come off the lead she doesn't need to wear a muzzle she can just run about um because she's a reactive dog i've spoken about it before um but yes we've booked that for her quite early this morning so i think before Yoli probably wakes up and before Ross wakes up I'm gonna just squeeze in a little bit of planty time. I've got some watering I want to do. Um, in fact, I uh, grab and show you. In fact, there's not actually a lot to show, but um, I want to finish the nematode treatment that I started the other day. Um, it's fungus gnat season and I have been hit hard and my go-to for fungus gnats is nematodes. I've banged on about them before honestly they are absolutely amazing and I've done I 
I think I've probably done about half the room so far. I've just been going through when plants are ready for a water and watering them through with the nematodes. Um, and yeah, already I'm seeing such a huge improvement, so I'm just gonna finish the room or everything that needs to be watered, just finish watering them through with the nematodes. Have my coffee, just do some general plant check up -y things and wake up a little bit. <laughs> Oh good, it's raining. I mean, you can't hide in the shed. Not <laughs> like it's wet. <laughs> We have made hot chocolates and we are getting into the spooky spirit. We have done nothing, I made those. I've, I've contributed spooky lollies and we are going to carve some pumpkins, which is something I haven't done since I was about, I think I've only done it once in my life. So sad for you. Everyone, please donate the links below to Claire's sad life. So I know this isn't planty per se, but... This is a plant, sort of. Yeah, yeah. It were grown by us. It were grown. It were grown <laughs> in pumpkin patch. We are. Oh, darling. That looks so dangerous. How many times have you cut the pumpkin? I'm also just going to act like I know what I'm doing and I'm just going to start in a more sensible way. But I asked you guys on Instagram uh, to send in some questions for me and Ross. We've been meaning to do. Well, I've been wanting to do like a re potty chatty thing with you for ages. So the first question was, how are you both? I mean, I think as, as a collective, I think we're good. How, how are you, Ross? Okay, right. Anything on. to report? <laughs> I'm, I'm Calabria. questions like that. I need, I need specificity. It's like small talk. You know, like how when, I'm sure we'll get to this, like when we first um, got together, mm. I think it was like we were both quite happy that we, we kind of skipped the, oh, no, in the, pumpkin. the question. Oh no, you got sword in your pumpkin. <laughs> Anyway, that was the first We're question. We're good. <laughs> We're good, thank you. 
are you attending the next plant swap together? Yeah, tomorrow. Well, I was going to say, seeing as it's tomorrow, I hope so. Yes, yeah, so I we would have attended before this goes up, is that right? Or are you not going to put this up before we go to the swap? So, yeah, in so which case, yes. yes, we'll see you there. Uh, or have seen you there. We'll it was lovely meeting you, you. Thank you so <laughs> you much. You were lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much, insert name, to for the plant. Lovely plant. Insert plant. Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> Ross and Claire, describe your ideal plant qualities. <laughs> describe your ideal partner. It's <laughs> 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 like, it's going to be blonde. Uh, <laughs> what was that question? Um, <laughs> describe plant qualities. Your ideal plant qualities. All right. I mean, I've, uh, there's my answer, and you probably have a better one. I would say like I like a hardy plant. Um, I like <laughs> I like a plant that can take a little bit of neglect. Is fairly drought tolerant. I would say it would have, and this is not just because this is one of my favourite plants at the moment, but I would say it would probably have the qualities of something like an Anthurium pallidiflorum because it grows beautifully, it grows fairly fast, it's really hardy. What about you, Ross? Um, surprisingly, actually, I mean, look, let's, let's be honest, I am more of a casual plant person and if I was being brutally honest, I probably wouldn't have many if, I, if it wasn't for you. That's fair enough. Um, mainly because I don't really have the patience for it. So I think my plant would be something that looks quite cool but also is quite hardy. Something that, you know, the kind of ones that you see in magazines when they like, they make a place look nice, but they're out, they're out the way. That was, that's not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a big fan of your, the big one, the, the, the You know it. I do, don't I? It's completely gone out of my brain. <laughs> Parrot. Bird of Paradise. That was a bird. Bird that of wasn't Paradise. Paradise. Bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise. Uh, <laughs> I like that because again, it's like it's a big old plant. It seems reasonably easy to keep because you don't. It's, you it's know, pretty easy actually. Um, but it looks very very cool. Doesn't get too in the way considering how big it is. It sort of you know goes over. So yeah, aesthetically pleasing, easy to easy to keep. Ones that don't yeah don't require too much attention. There are some plants you forget about for a day and the fecking thing yeah, dies. Yeah, I know. Some plants we've left for ages and it's fine. They're, they're my kind of thing. What is a plant that both of you love? Well, I, I know that a lot of the ones that I really love are not your cup of tea. For example, my Anthurium pallidiflorum. I don't know what that is. Yes, you do. It's the one that's hanging there in a place that I agree isn't the best place for oh, it. Oh, it's nothing. But... It's just a nothing plant. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's the apple of my eye. I love that plant. It's just, it's just like a beige plant to me. Like it's just nothing. It just, it's fine, but it's not like ooh, ah. Uh. It's amazing. I think one that we both love. I think we could probably agree, Bird of Paradise. Love that. It's that's just. Because it looks, because it, it's big, isn't it? And it's tr it's big and tropical. And I think as a, especially as like a, a like a non-plant person, mm. that's like a really obvious plant. It's like when someone says like the best film and they say it's the Godfather. Like it's such an yeah. obvious choice. It doesn't mean it's the wrong choice, but it's like, it yeah. feels like the Godfather of plants. <laughs> the, Godfather of the Godfather of The Godfather of plants. Our pumpkin carving session actually went on for about an hour and a half. Does Ross get annoyed at plant related mess like soil on the floor and plants in the shower? <laughs> uh, Yes. Is there a plant that you love, but you know you will never get? And we got onto some pretty weird topics. Are you going to have children together? You had a polystyrene head the other day. Um, sometimes you're wearing masks. Uh, sometimes he'll be up on the mezzanine that we sleep on and he'll like poke me with a little stick or something. I appreciate it might not be as planty as what you're here for. So if you want to watch the whole thing, I'll post it over on my Patreon. Otherwise, on with the vlog. It's time for a final reveal. Mine will go first. <laughs> this is Pumpkin Lump. <laughs> and whoa! Can you see that one? I feel like it might need a candle in it.
plant swap day. Woohoo! Oh, sorry about the knees again. <laughs> Such clicky knees. Um, but yet again, I have just got out of bed, literally just opened my eyes, and I need to head out for a dog walk very soon because I've got to knacker this one out before I take it to my mum's. Uh, my mum is on grand dog duties today, so we're gonna take her around there. I think about 9, 9am this morning and then we're going to head into London from there for the plant swap. I am, um, in fact you can see just that I packed up all my plants last night and I did end up taking a few more things that I haven't shown you. I didn't end up cutting any of my own plants but I did divide some seedlings and stuff like that so I, I'll show you them when we're either en route or at the plant swap but I've got a very full box of stuff and yeah, I'm very excited for today. I think it's gonna be such a fun day. But yeah, I'm just gonna have my coffee, wake up, catch up on some emails, messages, and stuff like that, and then get Yoli out. So cold this morning. We have just got home after a very, very long day of plant swapping. Feeling slightly exhausted and socially drained, but oh my goodness, it was the most lovely, lovely day. Uh, and also I've got a full box of plants here. I am, um, yeah, I can't, I've come back with a lot of stuff as I typically do, but I have to say, I think out of every, Oh, should we do maybe, should we do maybe like one or two now? I'm gonna say I'll show you them tomorrow, but, oh, you know what? Go on, let's open it. Spoilers. Spoilers! Oh, I can see one staring at me and I'm gonna show them this one now because this is one that I'm so excited about. Um, 
This is an Anthurium Regal Cross Blue Bessier. Easy for you to say. Uh, it's not easy for me to say. It's so stunning. This is, yeah, I, as you guys know, I'm so heavily into Anthuriums at the moment. I haven't even taken my coat off yet. Um, and I'm very excited about this one. And that was also one of the first ones I just grabbed. There are several others in here that are extremely exciting. Yeah, this one. This one is weird. You um, actually swapped this. This is actually from your a swap. own plant. I, yes, this is the only thing that you, well you bought sort of for me. But um, dear Sophie and Episcia, Capria, Episcia and Capria. That yeah. one. That one. This, um, which is weird, and people watched you put this on your lip to to, <laughs> to feel it. So Ross swapped his Begonia Breva Ramosa. This is the worst light. I'm like, oh, there we go. It's focused. Um, which is his pink, kind of hot pink stripey Begonia. Uh, you swapped a rooted cutting of that for this, didn't you? And it is so fuzzy. Again, this light. Also, the lights aren't on. No wonder they can't see anything. Oh, too bright. <laughs> uh, but yeah, how cool is that? I mean, we got some pretty cool, pretty we cool We got shiz. some really cool shiz. shiz. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that one is gorgeous. It's sexy, isn't it? It is, it's definitely a bit of you. You'll do a proper thing. I'll do like, a proper thing a, tomorrow, sure but this, I believe, is probably an Aphilandra of, oh no, it's not. Oh. It's an Ericene Herbstii Red. Oh, I thought it was, it looks a bit Aphilandra-y, but that is a Aphilandra Ross plant, isn't it? That looks like it's been painted. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so sleepy and Yoli hasn't had her dinner yet, bless her. Neither have so, we. So, neither have we. We were going to have a roast and that didn't work out, so now we're, we're, having we're having pizza and it's on its way. So, we're going to have pizza, go to bed, and I will show you the rest of the plants in the morning. Bye, internet. Hello, I have been holding off filming this part of the video this morning because the light is just awful. It's not just the scaffolding, it is the most gloomy, grey, dismal day. I can't complain because we had lovely weather for the plant swap, but it's just meant that I haven't been able to get started with this as quickly as I would have liked. And I honestly feel like a kid on Christmas morning. This feels like my stocking that I'm about to unpack. I am so happy so happy with the plants that i came away from the plant swap with oh in fact there is one that i've forgotten ah, i completely forgot about this one that i took out of the box last night but so i'm probably gonna i always say this but i'm gonna try and whiz through these plants quite quickly i think i've definitely come home with more than i took which was not the intention but people are so kind at these things and some some things were just given to me some things i i swapped i didn't keep track of it to be honest um i yeah all i know is that i've got a box of very lovely things um and as always emma and lisa did such an amazing job with organizing the plant swap and oh my goodness it was just the most lovely day it was wonderful to meet some of you guys there it was lovely to see some of you again there were incredible plants absolutely incredible plants and my mind is just blown with some of them so yeah as i say i know i showed you this one last night which you can see it's a little bit better in the light now it's just gorgeous and i'm so excited about it uh the one thing that i thought was really interesting actually is that um the like the desire for certain types of plants seems to have really shifted uh like for example i brought some philodendrons like the philodendron genevi vianum that one i brought some that i thought would be like snapped up so quickly and it was mainly anthuriums that people were really really going for um yeah, I just thought that was so so crazy because like some of the plants I've been to in the past that like you'd bring like a relatively common philodendron and people be like, oh my god, philodendron, have you got any philodendron? And that just seems to have kind of dipped a little bit. Um, also, Ross was so excited when he got home last night, he did actually pot, well, 
pot one of his plants that he got up into one of his little roster planters. Uh, this is a begonia. I'm not entirely sure what type of begonia it is, um, but it looks really weird and really cool and really creepy in his little roster pot. Uh, so yeah, that's exciting. All, but pretty much all of his little roster creations are intended to be plant related. So it's kind of cool that you can start putting some plants in them now. Um, but yeah, again, I don't have ID cards for everything that I'm going to show you. So if you know the plant, please comment it down below. If not, I'll try and put it on the screen. Before we get to the box though, before we get to the box, there is this one plant which was handed to me pretty much as soon as I got there. Again, I've said it before, I'm not gonna say people's names, even if I know exactly who you were that gave me things, um, just because I, I, like, I didn't keep note of everyone, I don't want anyone to feel left out, so thank you very much to the person that gave me this. And the person that gave me this is on my Patreon, and if you are on my Patreon and you've been to my live chat sessions, then you will probably know who this person is as well. Um, so this person found a section of this incredible cactus, can't remember the name of what it is, uh, but incredible cactus on the side of the road near where they lived and brought it home, rehabbed it, divided it. And they said at the time, if I still wanted a piece, they would root it and bring it to the plant spot for me. And they very kindly did. Uh, so I haven't actually, oh my God, <laughs> I haven't actually properly seen it yet. I've only seen it via webcam. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa, it is so much hairier than I thought it was going to be. So this is what it looks like. It's almost like an animal. That is so crazily furry. And actually, if you stroke it gently, it's really, really soft, but you can feel that underneath all of the hairs that are some spikes. But yeah, it is just weird and wonderful. And I, 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 yeah, as I say, I will find out more about this plant and I'll come back to you and I'll chat a bit more about it because currently uh, I know nothing, but it's very cool. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who, as I say, I got things from, swapped things with. I'm gonna stop waffling. I really am gonna attempt to get through this relatively quickly. Um, one other that I did actually take out of the box last night, there's not a huge amount to show yet, but that is what it looks like. And I only took it out because I got it uh, bare, it wasn't in moss or anything, and I just wanted to put it into some sphagnum moss. But I believe this one grows very similar to the Drymonia cherry bagana, which is a plant that I absolutely love. I've banged on about it before, and I did actually swap a little bit of my Drymonia cherry bagana for this. Um, if I can find a picture of what it looks like mature, in fact, I'll put it on the screen, but... Right, there's a lot, there's a lot, but let's start with this beautiful one, and this one is a Homalomina, I can never say that, Aromatica Pink Diamond, and in fact, I'll take it out and show you it properly. Yeah, that is what it looks like. It's absolutely beautiful, and the person I got this from said that apparently the way that the mother plant was growing, it was putting out a few green leaves followed by a few really intensely pink leaves and I quite like that balance. I know I've said I'm not always huge on colourful plants before but I think because this is kind of dusty pink I actually kind of love it. So yeah I'm really really excited to grow this one. Uh, it looks like it says keep propping so it hasn't fully rooted yet but it looks it looks lovely and very healthy. Uh, and then if you watch other plant YouTubers, then you might be familiar with this one. This is a, I think a Begonia Carii, and I've been eyeing this one up in the person I got this from's collection for such a long time, and I'm so happy to finally have it. Honestly, the size of these Begonia leaves just blows my mind. It's absolutely crazy. Um, don't think it's currently rooted. That's how it is at the moment, so I need to pop that probably into some water. That's been my go-to for begonia propping so far. I'm honestly so excited to have, oh, I mean, not, oh, I was gonna say a day of just like getting into these plants and doing things to them. Sadly, today is quite a busy day and I'm not gonna have as much practical planty time as I'd like, but this evening, I'm gonna go crazy. 
Oh, and then this one, I kept whipping this one out throughout the day to get you guys to smell it. So if you were there and if you saw me, chances are I asked you to smell this plant. And the lovely person that brought this for me, he said at the time, he was like, you might need a Ziploc bag to take this one home. And it basically smells just like marijuana. It smells just like weed. And I don't believe it's any relation. I don't think, but um, yeah, it's a beautiful little plant. It's one that I wasn't familiar with and it just has a very, a very naughty sense to it, which I quite enjoy. So uh, yeah, that is a fun one. And in fact, the same person also gave me this little one, which name I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce, but this is what it looks like. It's got a beautiful kind of purpley tinge to its leaves, particularly underneath. And yeah, it's just really, really lovely. And again, it's one I'm not familiar with. And I love getting things at Plant Swaps that I don't know anything about, particularly genuses that I don't know anything about because the hol hol homolamina, the one I can never pronounce, I've never grown a homolamina before. These two, I've never grown them. Uh, it's just really exciting. Really, really, really exciting. How many times can I say exciting in one video? I don't know. Uh, and then I've got a philodendron red heart here in this little cup. There we go, can you see it? And this one, as it matures, looks absolutely beautiful. The person I got this off was showing me pictures of what it could grow into, and it is honestly stunning. Um, I was going to say as well, some of the plants that I'm going to show you are also Ross's. Ross did a couple of swaps. He swapped some of his Begonia Breveramosa. Um, and also my lovely friend that couldn't make it to the plant swap, I was swapping her things on her behalf as well. So not all of these are my plants, but I am just gonna show you everything anyway. Uh, and then this is a lovely peperomia that I, like I saw it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. But I can't actually remember the name of it. I'm pretty sure I do have a name card in that. So again, name will be on the screen. Um, but yeah, the person that had this had several lovely peperomias actually, and I just took a couple of these ones, so I'm going to pop them up together and make a lovely full plant. Um, and then this is interesting, this is a cutting of a Hoya crinkolate, and the reason that I took this one is because, I've said it in videos before, but my mum has also got a Hoya crinkolate that I got for her that was a cutting originally from my plant, my mother plant, and they are growing so differently. In fact, I've got a bit of my Hoya crinkolate just here. If you look at the form of that one, and then you look at this, they are so, I mean, in, on camera, they don't look as different as they actually are, but this one is much flatter and bigger. Um, and this one's much more compact and crinkly. And I've always wondered if it's down to growing conditions or is it like a, a slightly different gene within the plants? So I'm excited to kind of experiment and perhaps try growing this one in the same conditions and see how it responds. So yeah, that's just a fun little experiment waiting to happen. Oh, and this one that I am so excited about, this might be another one of the ones in this box that I'm the most excited about. So this is what it looks like, and it's actually a Monstera, and it's a variegated Monstera Lecheriana. That's what the name looks like. But the lovely person that I got this from showed me a picture of what it looks like mature. And again, if I can find a photo, I will put it just there. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. And apparently once it gets going, it sizes up very quickly. So my prediction is that it's perhaps gonna be quite similar to the Monstera Dubia in that sense, um, because I know that took a while to get going, but then once it was going and growing, it just went crazy. So yeah, I'm so excited about that one. So excited. Oh, and then this one, very exciting as well. Um, this is a gorgeous little pickle plant and again, um, not saying any names but this came from a lovely person that's on my Patreon and I have seen their pickle plants and their collection before on our live chats and they've got an insanely massive mother plant but also, I, if I remember correctly, they were propagating loads at one point and there were just pickle plants everywhere. And I have had a pickle plant before and I overwatered my pickle plant and it rotted so I'm going to be very careful with this one but I just love the texture of it like it's so it almost feels like a little like I don't know sometimes you get little children's toys that are like rubber and they're kind of I don't know I can't explain it but I know what I mean 
Uh, and it's got incredible roots as well. So I feel like it's set up for success and I do hope it continues this way. I'm gonna be careful with it. Um, but yeah, it's lovely. Oh, and this very delicate one here. Uh, this is a Discoria SP Peru, and I've had a Discoria Discolor before, but I have never, ever, ever grown this exact type of Discoria, and I'm so excited about it. Just look at that. Uh, and I believe I'm right in saying that the Discoria is in the potato family. I, again, I might be wrong about that, but I think I remember hearing that, and hence why people grow often like sweet potatoes as houseplants because the runners they put off look very similar and can be very beautiful. Um, but I think when this one gets going, it's probably gonna grow like a weed. The Discoria Discolor that I had before absolutely did. I just love the shape of the leaves on this one. They're so like lobey and long and those are two things that I adore. Uh, I could also see that it is beautifully rooted, which is amazing news. So I'm so excited to pop this one up tonight. <laughs> oh, and the person that gave me this as well has also said it needs high humidity uh, and they keep theirs in moss. So perhaps maybe a terrarium environment or certainly like a cabinet environment might be best. Oh, this might be the sign that me and Ross need to actually start terrarium building as well. Cause yeah, I've been saying it for so long. Uh, right, and then, oh my goodness, this lovely, lovely, lovely person knew that I <laughs> struggled with this plant before. This is a Makoda's Patola Jewel Orchid. Um, and it's not that I struggled to grow this one per se, it's, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know it sounds ridiculous, but I am so clumsy with this plant. I have dropped it and knocked it off shelves. I think Yoli trod on one section and I've just broken so many and I haven't had the best luck propagating them. Uh, so again, I think this might well be a terrarium plant or something like that. Why is my camera not focusing? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I will make this into a terrarium plant and kind of keep it somewhere very, very safe. Um, but yeah, it's very pretty and I'm very excited. Oh, wow, look at those aerial roots as well. Those are incredible. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to have yet another go with this plant. The last jewel orchid, in fact, that I got from Malvern, which was, I think, about half a year ago now, that one is still going strong. So maybe it's just the specific type of jewel orchid I'm jinxed with, but we will find out. Oh my goodness, and I've got a beautiful, beautiful begonia to show you. And this one, so, it's a begonia anconifolia cross cossinia. I don't know, again, name will be on the screen. Um, but the lovely person that I got this from basically told me that uh, this came from, I believe it was their grandma's garden. Um, and very soon after the cuttings were taken for this plant, it was like, it was a, it's basically, it's a very unusual hybrid begonia. And um, very soon after cuttings were taken, the mother plant was actually stolen, which is so sad. Um, but I've never seen anything like this. I feel like the camera does not do it justice because it's got obviously the lovely kind of begonia form, but it looks like it's been cut on the side. And then the little splashy bits are actually a very pale pink. And when they catch the light, they shimmer. They're so beautiful. So yeah, it's very, very nicely rooted by the looks of it. And it's currently being grown in semi-hydro. I like growing begonia in that way as well. So I think I'm gonna keep it that way. But yeah, I feel really honored to have a little piece of, I'm sure it, I'm sure they said it was their grandma, grandma or auntie or something like that. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much. It's such a lovely, lovely plant and I'm so excited to grow it. Uh, and I do believe this, oh, again, I'm not gonna show you duplicates, but I've got some duplicates in here as well. Um, I believe this must be one that Ross picked up and I'm pretty sure this is an Aphalandra sclerosa. Uh, and this is the one that actually I said last night when he was showing you um, the Erosine herbs DI, I said they looked very similar and I was actually very surprised that they weren't, uh, let me grab it. Yeah, I was surprised that they weren't um, both Aphalandras because can you see what I mean? They almost, this almost looks like a pink version of this. Um, but I have grown the Aphalandra sclerosa before. I think it's a lovely, lovely plant. 
I found it quite difficult to grow actually. I found that it needed very high levels of humidity in order to keep it happy. It was quite susceptible to issues caused by overwatering. It was also very dramatic when it came to drying out. So although yes this was this was given to Ross or Ross swapped this one, I feel like it's one that maybe we could do a bit together on because um yeah like maybe maybe he will do amazingly with it like ross is like amazing with calatheas and i'm not always the best with calatheas so maybe it will be like maybe he'll thrive with that plant but yeah again i said i showed you ericene herbs di last night uh it's very pretty definitely a ross plant um and then this one the same person that gave me the lovely begonia that i just showed you also gave ross this one which uh, what's it called again? I've seen this one before. Begonia amphixius. Uh, and it's so stunning and again typically grown as a terrarium plant. So, um, so yeah, very excited to get that into a terrarium. God, we definitely need to do some terrarium building. Oh, and then I don't know exactly what kind of jungle cactus this is, but I swapped with somebody for these and they are so cool and the person that I got them from said that they had a big a big again mother plant that was I think they said like almost down to the floor or something they said it was absolutely huge um I love a jungle cactus and I saw this and I was so excited by it so yeah it's a, a very generous helping of cuttings I'm probably going to pop them oh in fact having a look at this one actually I think you know what they are actually rooted I had no idea um yeah, I think I'm probably going to go straight in to like a really chunky soil mix with this one. Uh, probably very similar to how I grow my fishbone cactus. This actually kind of looks like it might be a ripsalis. It almost looks a bit like the red coral cactus, but I'm not entirely sure. So again, if you know, please let me know. But yes, that's that one. Oh my god, I'm surrounded by plants right now. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to group these ones together. Um, and in fact, I only really need to show you one of these. So the first one, I brought over a plant to show you that I already have in my collection because it's one I speak about a lot. Uh, if you've watched my recent videos, you'll probably know I keep banging on about this one that grows like a weed. It is commonly known, it's a, it's a Coleus amboinicus and it's commonly known as Cuban oregano or Mexican mint. Uh, and I love it. I have totally fallen in love with that plant and I, yeah, I, I speak about it endlessly. Um, and several of you had obviously watched my videos where I've been banging on about it and you had brought me some things related to that. One of which is this little one which smells identical to the, in fact I haven't actually compared them since I've been home. Yeah, they smell exactly the same. Um, but I, and I got a couple of, a couple of sections of this one actually, but the lovely person I got this from said that it was actually called a juan or something um I, how do you how do you pronounce that uh, again i'll google it but i think they said that this was very similarly related but it was actually like an indian herb or something like that um please forgive me if i'm wrong about that but i think that's what they said um so yeah i'm so intrigued and i'm really looking forward to seeing how it grows because again it looks it looks very similar and smells the same but yeah, I'm loving growing things that I can also eat. Um, and then someone else brought me a section of the Colia Samboinicus Cuban Oregano Mexican Mint, but a variegated section of it, which I am so looking forward to growing. They said that they potted theirs up with the non-variegated variety, and I guess I could do that. I can be a little bit funny about that, so I think I'm going to keep them separate to start with. Um... Also, any of you that have propagated this plant before, would you go about doing it in sphagnum moss or would you go straight into soil? I'm not entirely sure because when I got my Coleus amboinicus, I got it as ready rooted cuttings, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, can't wait to grow that one as well. There's a couple of things that I got on the free table that I am not going to take you through because they're just like standard things that I've got to like fill out pots of plants that I've already got in my collection so yeah I'm not gonna take you through all of those 
Um, but then I got a Philodendron Linamii, which I know was on my wish list a while ago and I never got. And to be honest, I kind of just forgot about. Um, and the Linamii, I mean, so you can actually see if you have a look at the roots, the roots are bright red. And the thing that I love about this one and it is that it's new growth when it comes in is almost like a hot pink colour. Again, if I can find a picture, I'll put it on the screen. It looks so bright and dramatic and gorgeous, but then it just fades to a really lovely green. Um, and I can't remember actually if this one is a climber or a crawler. If it's a crawler, I have a feeling that maybe the reason I didn't get it sooner is because I haven't had as much space for crawlers in my collection. Um, I might just be imagining that though, but yeah, I am excited to see what it does for me. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful cutting. Oh, and then uh, there's only a couple more, oh, a couple more things that are not duplicates or free table. Um, this is a Philodendron Esmeraldense, uh, and I really struggled with the Esmeraldense. I got one just over a year ago, actually, now for my birthday. I bought myself a cutting, and the cutting rotted away to pretty much nothing apart from a little chunk. I thought it was doomed, and then all of a sudden the chunk that was basically rotten sprouted a root, and then that root sprouted a little leaf, and it was giving me so much hope, and then it rotted, and I couldn't save it. So, um, so yeah, this is a little rooted section that I'm going to start from scratch with again, and I'm really looking forward to giving another go with, because it's such a beautiful philodendron. Okay, this isn't, this isn't a plant per se, uh, but thank you to the lovely person that crocheted me this little hanging plant because it's so adorable and I just love it. I love it so much. So yeah, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then as I say, apart from, I, I think, unless, I'm, unless I've forgotten about anything, um, apart from duplicates and free table things, there is just one more and this is a wish list plant. And it is a variegated alocasia adora. And I spoke about this in a video really recently. Um, and bless you, one of you heard me talking about it and you brought me one. And I am so grateful because I am loving alocasias more than anything at the moment. And I've said it recently before, but like, there's, I'm very specific about the types of variegated alocasias I like because sometimes I think they can just look a little bit sickly. But the variegated adora is almost quite similar to the variegated fry deck in the way that its variegation is just kind of, I don't know, a little bit more sectioned and defined. Um, and this one is beautiful and it has in fact got a new leaf coming up just there as well. So I'm so excited to grow it. Uh, wow, I feel like I actually did whiz through those. That was the intention. I didn't want to dilly-dally too much this morning because as I say, it's a busy day and I so want to have time to actually play with my plants later but as I say I, I've, I've I've firstly I've really enjoyed doing this as a three-day vlog I've really enjoyed taking you guys with me over the course of a few days and doing a mix of planty and I guess not so planty things as well so if you enjoyed this kind of style please let me know in the comments and I will happily make more like this because it has been a lot of fun for me and it's been a bit different to what I usually do um, but yeah, it's just been really fun. It's just been really fun. And I, yeah, feel like, again, I feel like I've come away from the plant swap with, new, new, it's as corny as it sounds, new friends, like new people that I really look forward to seeing again and chatting to. And it just is really lovely. So yeah, thank you to everyone that came and made the day so special and came and said hello. Um, and thank you so much for my lovely plants. I'm blown away. So yes. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers.